Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Reagan. So today we have something a little bit different. This is my first time doing this, so I'm pretty excited about it. So when I was in LA at Indie Beauty Expo, I met up with Gloria and Victoria of Chemist Confession. So they are an Instagram account turned product line and they're both chemists and they started out in the corporate world. They didn't like it. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, and just about their line, about their experiences with products. I appreciate them because they bring a different aspect to the skincare community that I think that we all need and we want in the day and age of transparency. And they have an awesome Instagram account. Head over and follow them. One of the products I've been loving is their The Better Oil. It's a really nice oil product. It has rosehip oil. Let me check just to make sure that I'm getting the ingredients right. It has sea buckthorn, black currant, rose hip plant squalene and then it has some fatty acids they just formulate everything so meticulously and perfectly for skincare and what everyone needs in their product so yeah let's just roll into the interview I hope you all enjoy this let me know down below this is something a little bit different I just have never done it and I'm excited to have them on the channel if you guys could introduce yourselves that'd be yeah. great Awesome, awesome. So how did you guys meet and a little bit about your background? So we were a cubicle com uh, buddies at a beauty, big beauty conglomerate. We we're both skincare chemists and that's how we met. Yeah, and then uh, it just so happened that we both left the company around the same time. Um, and we've after, by then we were like pretty good friends and we kind of were discouraged by sharing some of the industry insider knowledge that we had um we did not know how that was gonna go or if people would even care you know or if the you know some of the terminology we use would be i guess a little too much yeah too dense um, and boring so um yeah so we started with like you know the instagram and people cool. liked it yeah Awesome. No, that's cool. I really, I love your guys' Instagram. So I think that especially nowadays, consumers or just regular people even are a lot more educated on chemistry and just the things that are put inside of our skincare products. So yeah, I can definitely see you guys have grown a lot and had really great success. Yeah, we're even surprised times. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, uh, so what do we do with the account? What do we do now? Like, we, because actually when we um, first left our jobs, we were thinking to leave the industry entirely. Okay. Um, just kind of, just wanted to start fresh, do something new. But, I mean, with the blog being so time-consuming, um, we were like, oh, maybe there's something we can do and mm -hmm. come out with um, a couple solutions. Like, yeah. This is like our last hurrah to the industry with the encouragement of our Insta community. It really got us thinking like, okay, because at the core of it, we're chemists and creating products is what we do. So we uh, got brainstorming on how do we, you know, take the educational on um, content and transparency and translate that over to the product side. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So how long have you guys been doing the Instagram account and whose idea was it to start the account? <laughs> um, so very random. We started the Instagram in August 2017. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then, um, you know, I, I actually never had an Instagram. So oh, cool. probably would have, that credit goes to Gloria to, you know, kind of use Instagram as the platform. Okay, um, cool. Mainly because I had a cat yes. account. <laughs> yeah. While I was uh, while I was kind of bored at my old corporate job, we, um, my roommate at the time and I started a cat account as a creativity outlet. So I was more or less familiar with that platform, yeah. the hashtagging, the community. So I thought maybe there's something there for skincare too. Cool. Yeah. yeah there's definitely a huge community. Even what I see 
on Instagram, there's definitely a makeup community and a skincare community. Mm-hmm. And the, the, then there's the beauty community up here. So it's just, it's, it is interesting how they kind of divide and also come together. All right. So what are your favorite ingredients to see in products? And what are the most BS ingredients that you see in products? <laughs> so I think favorites, um, we name, what we'll name is like all the ones you've heard about. So okay. like the retinol, the vitamin C, the AHAs, like those are all, yep. And those are all our favorites just because they've been around for so long, which means there's data behind it. Yeah. The bullshit category <laughs> we probably have to go to all things extract. Yeah. Now, not all extracts are bullshit. There are lots of great extracts out there that does have amazing skin benefits. Okay. But the problem is that, one, you never know how much is in it. And there's so many products out there, like, it's really just a hint of extract that doesn't do anything for you. Okay. And then, of course, like, with all these extract plant-based um, generally speaking, sounds sexy enough that y- you don't, you can't tell the difference between those that have data versus the ones that just just all foo foo. So, okay. okay, and also like the names um, don't actually convey like how the extract, like what kind of extract it is. So like it can be processed differently, okay. and yet similar name. So it can be very confusing for people. Um, so typically, you know, we don't. While we necessarily don't think it's like completely bs like we Uh try to tell people like it's great to have as like uh, an added bonus Mm -hmm. you know but still have like one of those like core actives that we like you know to kind of carry that product through which kind of like um to add on to that point this is why we don't like the blank rich claims like you'll see a lot of products that says oh it contains vitamin c rich extracts Mm -hmm. but those extracts are not going to work nearly as well as actual vitamin c itself so okay interesting i did not know that so that's a good tip for shopping for things for sure what's your favorite product to formulate oh Oh, that's a that's a good one so it goes for me it goes extremes right Mm -hmm. i loved our aqua face because it was a no-brainer it was a relatively easy thing to yes (laughs) yes yes <laughs> it was relatively easy to formulate just because like for us we definitely see that it's a popular category i have very really de- dehydrated skin and i definitely benefit from something like that but on the market it's hard for me to find something that has all the ingredients i like you might get one or two things okay. as a star ingredient and no one will bother to put more on top of it so okay. for us the concept was simple and the formula was straightforward so that was one of my favorites. Yeah, it's not an emulsion. It's just a water gel. So Ooh, cool. pretty easy. Um, And then what are some of your must-have ingredients for a base of a product? And I'm not a chemist, so I'm not sure if that's the right question to ask. But what are some ingredients, I guess, that when you see or when you're formulating that you just want in a product as the base? Well, okay. So there's, there's certain requirements for... Um, a formula you need preservatives uh, okay. to give it that shelf life um, if you are going to incorporate both water and oil components you're going to need emulsifiers and that's okay. going to keep you know your formula sticking together and keeping its nice beautiful like creamy um, aesthetic um, you're also what else do you need sometimes you're going to need um there, you'll need gelling agents, stuff that are, we also can call them like go, co-emulsifiers mm-hmm. to help just further boost the, emuls, the emulsion. Okay. Um, and then you have like, if you do moisturizers, you want the humectants, emollients, the occlusives. Mm-hmm. If you have um, certain actives that, a, a lot of actives aren't too stable. So mm-hmm. it does need a boost, and you'll need things like antioxidants to help protect those actives. A go-to will be vitamin E, which mm-hmm. is often um, uh, an antioxidant to help co- um, preserve your formula, mm-hmm. and it's listed as tocopherol or, or tocopherol something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. And I guess like as a consumer, the hard part about um, looking for certain ingredients is like, uh, one person's magical ingredient might not be another's, you know. Yeah. So it, it does, it does, it definitely takes some uh, guesswork. But we always say this is kind of cheating when people ask us how to read ingredient lists. We always say go to a brand that gives you at least the active percentages too, okay. so you know what you're getting. Okay, yeah. interesting. That's a good tip. Um, <laughs> okay, so 
My favorite product, I think, that I've gotten the little travel buddy kit is the Better Oil. I love this. So can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. Um, so the oil is, um, it has a blend of sea buckthorn, rose mm. hip seed, and then grape seed oil. So that's oh, the sorry. big. Black, um, black well, I'm sorry. Gra- yeah, black currant. We've been doing oil. So I like that. Um, yeah. So we, those three, black currant with black currant and then um so that's the base and then it has um squalene um we chose those three plant um oils um for their fatty acid profile um but the problem with plant oils is that um it's the triglyceride version and so it doesn't really provide those nice fatty acid benefits that you'll find in a lot of studies Um, So the great part is we added um, 1% actual free fatty acid in its true form with the linoleic and linolenic acid. So that way it can give and actually give you um, these like brightening benefits. It also is really great for people who have acneic skin. So Mm -hmm. that was like kind of our challenge, which was we wanted to make a face oil that even oily skin types wouldn't mind trying out or could like at least include them too because i think oils for for people like especially for me um who has like combo acne Mm -hmm. um is a little intimidating to try right so i guess when we formulate it um ultimately the oil comes down to um two big challenges so for us one is um as victoria just mentioned for oily skin and two is we want to make an oil that on top of short-term moisturization benefits, gives your skin a long-term boost. So we, um, as she mentioned, we have the 1% fatty acid for long-term benefit. Okay. And we also have the um, 1% visible oil. So going okay. back to how we talk about um, how extracts are kind of BS, visible oil is derived from chamomile and, and has really long-term like um, studies that show it's benefit as an anti-inflammatory skin calming agent but again you don't know usually you don't know how much is in the product so we go ahead and put in one percent to kind of maximize that benefit so that's kind of our logic behind the oil yeah just like cramming everything honestly anything we think an oil should have in there we Mm -hmm. just wanted to like to take the best parts of an oil i feel Mm -hmm. like and Mm -hmm really put that into a bottle and mm-hmm. that's why we like I guess in a way very confidently named it the better oil right. <laughs> I love it I think I like that it's an oil but it doesn't have that oily feel it's more of a dry oil so it absorbs into the skin what I've just noticed using it so it's not like I have more normal combo so I can get a little bit oily but I don't know, it just it's a really nice fit for my skin type at least. I really like that one. What was your inspiration for the line, the branding? Because the branding is really cool. Um, <laughs> it's definitely different. I feel, um, I lived in Taiwan for a while and so I traveled oh. quite a bit in Asia and stuff. So I definitely get a bit of a kind of K-beauty feel with the packaging, but I also see just a lot of different influence in it. So just tell us a little bit about it. You asked about how we got started and yeah. did a job. And then it's like, okay, let's see what products we can make. So then we were like, okay, so what problem do we want to tackle? And mm-hmm. we really think that moisture, there's something difficult about moisturizers um, for skincare users. It's like you don't really have a control of what you're going to get in the jar. You don't know how it will how it's going to affect your skin. So how can we kind of create some order in this category? Mm-hmm. Okay. Most of the, like, I, I guess um, most people we know, it's definitely a blind, like, try and dump. You know, you, you don't know mm-hmm. some, you don't know why something works versus why something doesn't. Yeah. So as, uh, as your se- as season changes or your skin changes with travel and age or whatnot, you end up back to square one, you know, blindly trying new products, but then, we want to create a line where it, it helps people kind of understand their skin better on an ingredient level. Mm-hmm. So even when you go through these changes, you kind of know how to maneuver your um, your own skin, basically. Yeah. Okay. And what people actually don't know is that you can actually categorize 
um, ingredients in the moisturizer category. So you have your humectants, so those are like hyaluronic acid and glycerin. Um, mm -hmm. You have your emollients, which are going to be your light oils. Um, and then you have your occlusives, um, which are going to help, you know, stay on top of the skin but seal in all that moisture. So those will be like your waxes, your petrolatum, um, and they'll be like these balms. So how can we create you know, a good product in each category that allows people to kind of elevate, you know, their routine and give them kind of a tool so that when their skin, because our skin changes so often, yeah, right? You, definitely. you travel, you go through stresses. So instead of wiping out your entire moisturizing routine and starting from scratch again, take a product and try to just like give your routine a boost, right. you know, mm -hmm. when it needs a little bit more help, mm -hmm. right? So that was kind of the strategy we have behind the line of course no one wants there's people like me <laughs> who like are very lazy about the routine and don't want to layer so that's yeah. why we did come out with mr reliable as kind of like our chemist's favorite mm -hmm. balance of those components put into an all-in-one moisturizer especially for people who like don't know where to start right right yeah. people who are just looking for a fresh beginning yeah. and honestly um and Mr. Reliable is purposely made into this more lightweight, lotion-y texture, mm -hmm. so it suits more people's skin type. It's more layer friendly. We get a lot. We get asked a lot, like, why didn't we come up with a cream? Mm -hmm. So Mr. Reliable is more humectant heavy. It's a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. okay. so so it's more layer friendly. Part of our goal to create this brand and the product launch strategy, mm -hmm. um, as you know, that it isn't to completely wipe out someone's routine, like yeah. you know. We didn't want to come out with a full set of products and say, hey, like throw everything you own out because our product's better. Yeah. And we want to have them discover what's going to make their routine better. And oh. another challenge we had was a lot of people ask us, we talk about actives a lot. Like we know a lot about your AHAs, your BHAs, the retinols. So why didn't we come out with those products right off the bat? Mm -hmm. um, we, we're definitely interested in those categories, but we also think that people are people's skin are so stressed right you go through mm -hmm. pollution you go through your day-to-day -day life and on top of that people are starting to understand what these actives can do for your skin so people are just layer crazy on these ingredients yeah. so we want the moisturizer line to set a good foundation for everyone so within all four mm -hmm. products there's also a heavy dose of soothing ingredient that kind of fits that category oh and then the packaging can you tell us a little bit about that and the branding <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's actually a really <laughs> good question because packaging is an area we're not super familiar with as yeah. chemists. Mm -hmm. Though we definitely went in blind. And... Yeah, I think like, <laughs> the goal was okay. Yeah, we're we're not packaging designers, so we wanted something simple mm -hmm. and all gender inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, just because we think skincare, for the most part, the ingredients um it doesn't need to be. Um, really divided by gender yeah. so um that was the goal with that um but i mean we're kind of quirky people mm -hmm. so how can we inject a little bit of ourselves into it so um it's like these like subtle details that we like to add into um some of the boxes and um i think it yeah just kind of capturing like that flair that we have on our instagram mm -hmm. okay. into uh, I think at some point we vaguely thought about like that we we're gonna get help designing packaging, <laughs> but we didn't. It was all, you it was guys all, did it all by yourself. That's cool. That is yeah, really Victoria cool. Victoria did all the sketches you see on the packaging. Oh, that's awesome. And that person that just like sat behind her being like, yay, nay, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it looks really <laughs> good. It looks really good. I was, yeah, I thought you guys got someone to do it for you. So, no, yeah. No. And the best, the funniest thing was like, one of those behind the scenes stories we like to tell is the most frustrating thing about designing packaging is color matching. Yes. Your 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 manufacturer is going to be like, okay, which shade of pink do you want? And next thing you know, you're staring at like 50 pinks. You're like, oh. <laughs> when we made the travel bag, we had no, that actually <laughs> yeah. was like, the, the that drew the line for me. Really? It was like, we'll never go into fashion. <laughs> The level of detail that they ask for, like the stitching, the lining, like how you want it, they them to put mm -hmm. in the orientation, just that level of detail is 
so much more <laughs> than I feel like what we right. did with the products. And I feel like I, I that's it. Like I couldn't do it. It's, <laughs> it's hard. It's a really hard to do this. And especially you did a really good quality little satchel here. So I, I can tell that thought was definitely put into that. And it wasn't just mass produced off of some truck, like fell off the truck or something. <laughs> like it's really custom. I don't know if you can put this in the final cup, but we decided when we wanted to do a bag, we coined, we were like, we are not going to put something out there that's like Clinique ugly. <laughs> you know? like, oh, I don't mind putting it in there. Don't I? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I know what you mean. What are your, do you have plans for any other products? Any cleansers? And if you, okay, this is a really <laughs> random, but would you do cream based or a gel based cleanser? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. So, Hitting all the good, good yeah. one. <laughs> so we are uh, trying to launch a cleanser soon. Okay. We, um, based on what the community told us, we um, they told us they want something fragrance-free, okay. they want something very gentle, and they want something that's pH-friendly for your skin. Okay. So we took those criteria, and we, we know that based on those criteria, those cl- types of cl- gentle cleansers, they usually don't wash that well. So we kind of set the bar of trying to make something that fit those criteria, but still is powerful enough to even remove makeup, at least on a light day, okay. or at least like used, uh, used that as a, as a reach goal. Yeah. So we created two cleansers that we think fit that bill. One's a gel cleanser and one's like mm-hmm. slightly creamier. So that's where, you know, we decided we were like, uh, we can't decide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like both forms are great. They are, you know, they're probably meeting all the same criteria. So for us, it's like, okay, it's time to, like, let our followers and people who want to be a part of it, like, let them try it out and make the decision for themselves, you know. We have bets going (laughs) as who's going to come out the winner, but we'll see. We're just right now in the middle of it. Right in the middle. um, They're about to try the next one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we'll see where it goes. We'll let them tell us how they really feel about it. Um, no feelings hurt so then from there we'll probably decide on the formula we'll go forward with do some more final tweaks yeah. look mm-hmm. pe- uh, loop more people in and then just create the best cleanser we can and cleanser is an interesting topic yeah speaking of like like it's not our favorite thing to formulate per se okay. and it's very polarizing right people are you're not gonna please everyone with a cleanser that's just not how it works yes. and it's hard to find that middle ground of like does the job and you know, just maximize other fringe benefits of a cleanser, so. Yep, exactly. So that's the immediate project we're working on. We're also working on a couple acid treatments. Mm -hmm. Um, We want to, I think the goal with the acid treatments is, again, there's going to be a level of customization in that, um, giving people these tools that allows them to incorporate into their routines as they see fit. So um, we'll cover some of our favorite acids. Mm -hmm. Um, We're right now thinking of three different treatments to come out with. Um, And we'll also run that through our little like product development incubator to to see how that goes but yeah we're big fans of AHAs and there's some other cool ingredients that we like to incorporate um Mm -hmm. as blends so hopefully that would be out soon yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's so cool I I like your guys's brand one thing I really like about it as well is I feel like you guys do what I call clean chemistry where I wouldn't say that your products are all natural by any means, but they right. are, you don't see the sulfates, you don't see the parabens, you don't see a lot of the things that a lot of people who do look for clean ingredients look at as their base. So that's definitely cool. That's something I appreciate for sure. Well, thank you guys so much for getting on here today and doing this with me. It's my first time doing this, so I'm really excited it was with you all. So thank you so oh, much. Thank- no, thanks for and thanks for trying our products. We always right. we love having like we don't get a lot of chances to talk to people who've like tried it that don't know us. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, we um send out a lot of emails asking, but to get to like talk to someone and kinda of have a back and forth conversation of your experience with it, it's like it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. rewarding. Yeah. yeah. Thanks guys. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.
Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go show Victoria and Gloria some love over on their Instagram because they have an amazing account with so much information. Alrighty guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world.